you notice there over my right hand shoulder, it's a air traffic control tower. So we're at Adelaide Airport. I don't know whether I let the cat out of the bag earlier, but uh, we're heading up to, uh, we're heading down to NZ for a couple of weeks. We're going to spend um, a week in Christchurch and then uh, a week up in the North Island in Taupo. Catch up with family and friends. So uh, it's a beautiful day here for our departure in Adelaide. And uh, sorry, this is a little bit uh, out of the ordinary of uh, sweet as RVing as far as seeing our RVing and exploring the off grid bits and pieces. But we'll take you on a journey back to our hometown and uh, show you some of the sights of NZ just as a bit of a break from the, the usual. <laughs> So uh, stay with us, sweet as our being. We're getting on a bird. Rory, how you notice a little bit of a uh, different attire on us here. Uh, yeah, beanie, the old canvas hat, even though I did bring it. Uh, nice day though, it's got to be hitting, what, 18, 20? I'm here with uh, Reese, my sidekick. Oh, he's over this way. I'm over here. <laughs> this is Reese. What's he's, up? And uh, yeah, he's taking us out for a little drive, we're staying with him and uh we're, we're checking out what we call the um it used to be called the red zone um here in christchurch this was after uh, i don't know whether many of you know but what was it, about 20 odd years ago we had the uh no, 2011 2011 yeah it's had the 10 year anniversary a couple of years 10 ago. years yeah i knew it was a yeah a zero something um so um yeah big earthquake hit um christchurch and um a lot of areas like like these um, they uh, suffered what they call liquefaction, which is when the ground shakes so much, the water from the water table or whatever comes up through the ground and uh, yeah, really made it sort of unlivable. A lot of the houses were unstable in bits and pieces. So the decision was made to, well, they paid a few of them out, they're still... It all got paid out by the government, they created an earthquake commission. Yep. And people are still battling them now, but they yeah. got paid out. So, um, yeah, there's large amounts of land of which we're walking over here now, which used to be homes, gardens, yeah. And uh, so uh, it's now all green space, um, parks and things. And yeah, it's interesting to walk around. You could, we obviously came up some people's driveways there and um, there's a few little gardens around and bits and pieces which were established. This is cool. But uh, yeah, trees, this looks like a little, uh, communal area, never yeah. been in here. So yeah, pretty sort of sad in a way, but um, yeah, some more green space gets created and people oh, can buy or get relocated to somewhere a little bit more safer for the uh, uh, any future earthquakes. Created a little bit of a community garden. Not much to see of the uh, the street, but yeah, there's still a, a small footpath that uh, remains. I'm not too sure whether the power even goes too much these days. Um, people's old telephone cables to their houses and then their driveways. But there you have it. One of the, the many, what used to be called red zones, now become a green zone. Made it up to a really nice little uh, calf. It's called the sign of the Kiwi. And talk about an amazing view. We're up in the Port Hills um, of Christchurch. And uh, I think the, uh, the gondola's on this side and there's the adventure park on the side. This place is just loaded with people doing mountain biking and uh, walks and things. So nice little spot. Um, Littleton's just over the other side of the hill here. And uh, yeah, Cashmere. But look at the building itself. Solid. Anyway, I'm gonna sit here and have a coffee with a view. Beautiful. Oh, look at these guys. How's that? Really popular city for, for biking and uh, some great trails around. These guys are very energetic going up the hill. How you doing? Hello. Yeah, so there we have it. We're up at the top here um, on the Port Hills, Sugarloaf, something like that, I think it was. We're overlooking the city, the Christchurch. And uh, just before I go, we'll 
swing around. This is the uh, kind of like the, the top of uh, Littleton Harbour down on this side. That uh, little community tucked down on the right hand side there and swings around to, around to the harbour. That's where we're heading off to next. We made it down the hill from our viewpoint to Littleton. It's just the other side of uh, Christchurch there. It's two ways. We've obviously done our, our little uh, way around or you can come through the tunnel, which obviously is going to be a lot quicker. Not as much fun as what we've just gone and done. And uh, behind me, Littleton's renowned for uh, the port. And uh, we've just driven sort of like past There's a lot of stopping spots here for the, for the port. But uh, a couple of ships here, loading's one over here and there's one, uh, there's a container one over here you can't quite see. You can see the container crane. But, uh, oh, and the other thing of interest, or behind me up on the hill up the top there is the uh, vantage point for the gondolas. You can go to the little gondolas. And then on the other side of me, up over here, uh, we've got the, the time ball as well. It's a good morning from New Zealand. It's uh, day day two, full on day two. Uh, yesterday was a, a huge uh, rush, but uh, it was mainly to sort of get some of the formalities out around um, the Christchurch area because we weren't going to spend too much time in Christchurch, and uh, today's um, going to be quite a quite a trip. So just to touch on yesterday, um, we uh, did a little bit of the old earthquake zones. And then we uh, shot um, up the hill um, to have a look at the, the vantage point, the lookout area there from one side being Littleton and the other side being Christchurch. I don't think it got too badly affected by the earthquake, even though a lot of houses are there perched on the hill. Um, I pointed out um, in Littleton there the time ball. So that was one sad building that did um, succumb to the earthquake back in 2010. Um, I, I, it, it got partially um, uh, wrecked and then um, I think in 2011 there was a mild um, aftershock of around about 6.4 and that was it, it was game over and um, it was unsalvageable so um, I think don't quote me but I think the time ball what we see there has been um, reconstructed and um, it's back into use the time ball was used back um, in the eight it was built back in 1876 and it worked um, right up through to about 1934 and it was used obviously to signal the ships that were out there waiting in to sea. So where are we now? We then um, went through the tunnel. I think we just got a few little photos. Man, that's a very long tunnel. And that's the first time I've been through the tunnel from Littleton to Christchurch. Um, and then popped out the other side. And um, yeah, then from there we went of course into the town and caught up a little bit more of those um, town devastation. Um, had a, um, a nice cocktail at the OBG, the government um, buildings there. They were uh, very nice. Right, that brings us to today. We had a good night's sleep last night. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely snuck up underneath the old flannel sheets. Um, it's pretty cool. But we're gonna, we've got a road trip ahead of us today. We're gonna go from Christchurch and travel across to Greymouth. It's only a trip of, and I say only, 257 odd kilometers according to um, the Google. Anyway, so it's amazing that you can go from east to west here in New Zealand in about three hours um, compared to going from east to west in um, Australia. We've been tooting along the road here for about an hour now and um, Reese and uh, Jenna has stopped us off at a uh, place called Sheffield and as you can see behind me the Sheffield pie shop. Apparently they got some pretty tasty looking uh, flavour of pies. It's world famous apparently so uh, I'm going to go on in and check out the pies. Yeah. 
Alrighty ho, we're getting back in the car again after having that, that was a bloody good pie. So that was the venison and um, whiskey chutney. Oh, look about, I'm warmed up on the inside now. Oh, excuse me, let's go. Next stop along the uh, journey to Greymouth or Hokitika. Uh, just come through the, uh, the Arthur's Pass, I believe. And we're stopped here at uh, Castle Hill. So, uh, yeah, up on the uh, top up there. So, uh, it's probably the most energetic I'm going to be in a long time. Uh, we're going to give it a crack. So, uh, wish me luck. <laughs> here we go. Sculptured out of the bad of the weather. I mean, it was all under sea at some stage. There's a rock just perched up on that one precariously. Feel like a mountain goat. <laughs> Just interesting contrast. Yeah, um, Australia's got all those rocks and things that we've been to. New Zealand's got them as well. Um, interesting how the Aussie ones, you've got those big granite outcrops where you can trap all the water because you need it. We're here. Yeah, there's a river there, river there, river there. Yeah, stacks of water. As you can tell, it's got wetter, it's got colder. I think it's about, uh, it's got to be, we've got to be into signal digits now. Uh, I've got to apologise back when I was at the uh, Castle Rock, I wasn't in the Arthur's Pass. This is the Arthur's Pass. <laughs> oh, been away from New Zealand too long. So there you have it in the background, and uh, we're in the west coast officially, across the sign saying welcome to the west coast. Oh yeah, pretty staggering. There's waterfalls falling out of everywhere sort of thing. Nothing too much in a hurry, all under control, but really pretty. And uh, we were hoping we might be lucky enough to see a Kia. And uh, there's a few little signs over here on the uh, post saying uh, about the Kia and don't feed the Kia. But uh, they're our um, alpine parrot out here. Beautiful bird, very curious. I'm just pulling the car to bits. So this is the uh, Otera Viduct. Vida. Okay, we just arrived in Greymouth. And uh, Greymouth is famous for the Montes Brewery. Also famous for coal and mining and gold. The West Coast. So uh, we're going to go in. As you can see, it's a bit, bit grey, a bit miserable. Here we go. Montes. Oh, they do a brewery tour. All right, we can just hear this over the music and things, but Monty's history. Okay, so this was the interesting part uh, about the history of beer. Captain Cook has been given the credit for producing the first local brew. It was in Dusky Sound in 1773. He had uh, molasses, rimu and manuka to prevent scurvy. As inviting it, as it sounds, there was no record of his crew asking for a pint or even a six pack to take home. You can tell by the glow on my face that I'm all warmed up. That fire was beautiful and I uh, had some uh, soft shell tacos uh, like pulled sliders so 
They were good. Only anyway, white. Gonna get some supplies. Yep. Anyway, good morning. Excuse my uh, little congestion. Yeah, got cold. Um, the Pyro Hotel. It's been in the family since 1954. Done a nice little refit. It's a beautiful little uh, hotel. Uh, the rooms are absolutely schmick. They're good. A uh, bit of a bar, restaurant, and things in there as well. So uh, highly recommended. We are on the move. We're just getting our um, four-wheel drive all packed up ready to head further down the coast straight away things are looking promising we're in the Hokitika Gorge gonna have a nice little walk along the gorge along the river and uh, the rain has held off for the time being fingers crossed hopefully we can get through here um, I don't know whether you can hear it oh, you can hear that car but up in the tree this one up here. Where is my hand? Up there. There's a Kia. You can hear it just. We're already home, about to cross the uh, Hokitika River via this little uh, swing bridge. Only takes six people at a time, so it's a little bit precarious. But, uh, quite a lot of colour in the river there due to snow melt or glacier. And we've had a little bit of um, a little bit of rain as you have noticed. Certainly pretty with the colour contrast. Okay. There you have it. Pretty cool. Uh, pretty busy looking uh, car park here, French Joseph car park. It's where you park your wagons and then start a, a little hike. How far have we got, uh, Reese? I want to say two kilometres. Two kilometres up to a bit of a vantage point. So uh, there's helicopters coming and going, so they got some pretty good uh, sights. So, but that's the place here, just up there. There you go, arrived at the base, well, the river part of the Franz Joseph Glacier. Up behind me there you'll see it disappearing up into the hills. This is as far as we can walk, the rest is uh, helicopter. But uh, nice little spot, swinging on around, greeted by beautiful 
waterfalls coming out of the old bush there. Oh man, could we ask for a better day? Did you guys know what type of morning we had when we got up? It was dismal and grey. Even there was fog going in between the lens of the uh, protector of my phone case here and uh, my camera lens. And look at it now. It's so hot. I've had to peel off layers of clothing and bring out the old camera set. Looking good. I'm um, just pulled up at the uh, wildlife centre. Something to do with kiwis. But it's also apparently a uh, stockist of uh, a very good pie. So you know me after pies. But look at the background. Where was I? Sorry. Franz Joseph. So that's what Franz Joseph is all about. Franz Joseph is all about the glacier. Into the uh, Kiwi Centre. Get a bit of an interactive introduction first. We've got VIP. So we get a little bit behind the scenes, which is cool. So yeah, interesting to know that there's um, about five different uh, kiwis. There's the Great Spotted, the North Island Brown, the Little Spotted, Rowiwi, and Ko Ko Koka. Sorry about that one. Anyway, we're going in the dark. I'm not too sure how well all this footage will um, work out. So bear with me. Continues to feed the chick for the first few days. <sighs> Getting darker and darker. No photography or filming. I'm out of luck. Just about finished our Kiwi explanation. Down in here is a little incubators. Down on this far end is where they keep the Kiwi. And then he pops out and there's a, a dirt and rich with what do you call it, bugs and things, and they can go out there and explore. So you have really interesting chat on the Kiwi. What's up? I just wanted to know if it sounds like a big place. Oh, there's I always... I you're recording. There's always one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got... The biggest problem with our uh, Kiwi is that, of course, the predators like the stoat. They can lift um, in their jaws five times the body weight. Uh, their body weight so they can easily walk out with a the kiwi and then down here this this little kiwi down here and get it here that one there's the size of a kiwi when it comes out of an egg one day old and the idea is to get it up to the one in behind which they call stoat proof and an adult kiwi that was cool as that so it's been an interesting little exercise she is, isn't she? She'll sit still for a little while, but basically, once she starts soaking up her body temperature, she'll get fidgety. Every day brings new light to help us on our way. Always taking my breath, weather sound. The gang are leaving the Kiwi and Tuatara Centre. So, uh, yeah, well worth the entry. Obviously, uh, your entry helps goes towards saving the Kiwi. So, yeah, we're doing a lot. It's nice to see that they're steadily making a, uh, an improvement in their numbers. And thanks to people like that that go the extra distance to do that. So, onwards, we're going to go and have a drink. Just, just having a nice quiet beer over at the landing there. Happy hour, it's good. Guess who else thought it's happy hour? I don't know what the view's gonna be like, but I'm sure you can hear them. There's about eight of them. There's three in view just up here. You can see one little dot there, one little dot there, and there's another little dot further down there. New Zealand's Alpine Parrot, the Kia. Well, good morning, Franz Joseph. We are departing. Thank you. It's been a really nice uh, stay here, and to wake up to just glorious, fresh conditions. Amazing, amazing visibility up there, isn't it? It's incredible. 
So uh, the, the ten cottages we stayed at, it was uh, yeah, it was nice. It's uh, had a good night's sleep and uh, everything all close by to enjoy here at uh, Franz Josef. It's a pretty pretty nice place, and the weather has really put it on. So really really happy. We're going to move further down um, south. I think Queenstown somewhere around there. I've left, left everything in charge with uh, Jenna. She's doing a, a fab job. Um, you know, travelled around Australia so far, and uh, I'm taking the time off, and they're showing me around, so that's good. So uh, I'll leave this beautiful magic spot and uh, toodle on our way. Go and get the go and get the vehicle pa uh, packed up. Sweet as. There we go. Boom. First port of call since leaving um, Franz Josef Glacier is we're in Fox Glacier or the town of Fox Glacier. And we've got a good vision here of um, Mount Cook or Araraki. And we're here at, um, I think it's Lake Matheson. So uh, what a gorgeous morning, eh? Now we're talking. A river I can see the bottom on. Sure is a pretty little stream that one. And Lake Matheson has an absolute gorgeous reflection of Mount Cook Araki in it. Couldn't have got a better day. Pretty awesome.